let's call it the seven dilations of the dream field, which I already really presented in the guided meditation yesterday. Uh, there has to be an acceptance. Accept the condition of your body and your mind. Uh, if you start out hating yourself and think, thinking, uh, I can't meditate, I, I'm, I'm too low a being, I don't deserve God, et cetera, et cetera, any of those thoughts, or, or I wish my body was different, more attractive, uh, younger, w without pain, w w I wish it could hear better, I wish it could uh, run, I wish it could do things that it can't do anymore. Uh, those kinds of things are, are obviously going to get in the way of being in the natural state of pure consciousness. So there has to be an acceptance. Then you have to accept your karma. Uh, and, uh, and that means not only accept the past uh, that uh, almost everyone these days has some traumatic element to their childhood experience, there's very few people who, who grew up in uh, an ideal household of loving parents. Uh, very few. So, uh, so everyone has, uh, has karmic uh, leftovers, if they're still in the ego, of, of anger and uh, of, uh, of sadness and often of terror and, and often of uh, a sense of abandonment and unworthiness, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and these are... Uh, uh, are, are very important to accept as, uh, as part of the particular training that you have chosen to go through. It didn't happen because you're a bad soul and you committed sins and therefore uh, you had to suffer. It's part of the uh, choice to become an angel and understand what it means to suffer so you could develop compassion, bodhicitta. And it is, uh, it is a blessing. So you need to accept uh, all of that. But I think it's much more difficult, especially if someone is in a, a young body, if someone's in their 20s, not like me. I've lived my life and, you know, had my adventures and uh, did my drugs and uh, my affairs and had my travel and uh, did everything, had all the careers I wanted and uh, quit them all. And, and you know, uh, I, di I did my uh, thing. So I have no, uh, no problem letting go of the world. But if you're 20 and you thought you had the world ahead of you and, uh, and you were looking forward to a career or having children or living a normal life, and you suddenly realize society is collapsing, it's in lockdown, there's massive genocide, the whole planet is being destabilized, uh, life is over, you ain't gonna have a normal uh, adulthood, you're not going to have a successful career as a professional, the society is gone. Uh, there's no culture. You're not going to go to plays. You're not going to see great films. You're not going to read great novels. None of that is being produced anymore, and nobody can read anyway, but it isn't there. And, and everything you're, you've learned is a lie, you know, uh, but it's basically it's over. And to, to face that when your, your body is young uh, is got to produce some anguish. So uh, that has to be uh, dealt with, it has to be faced directly and not run away from or denied because if you're in denial of the reality of the situation, then you're headed for some karma because uh, you, you'll have some errors in judgment based on wishful thinking. So uh, it's very important to be realistic in terms of uh, what the world is now offering and, uh, and we are in the winter of discontent and, uh, and destruction, uh, the eve of destruction, not, uh, and, and it's really close to midnight. So uh, it's not uh, a time, it's not a springtime uh, for Hitler or anyone else, uh, but it's, uh, it's definitely an end. So I think that it's important to uh, come to terms with that or else uh, the, uh, the process will be very difficult to complete and, uh, and you will neither get happiness on the physical plane nor liberation from uh, the illusion.
unless you do. And then you must open your heart to the superconscious self. Open your heart to that which is real because the world is a simulation. It, it is a maya. It is an illusion. It's empty of substance. It's empty of, uh, of reality. Uh, it's, we are in a flux, a constant change. Uh, there's nothing you can hold on to. Uh, everything is, is becoming different at an exponentially it, it increasing, accelerating rate. So the, uh, uh, the world, is, in its, uh, your desire for anything from the world must be let go and realize that the only way you're going to receive uh, the blessings of goodness and fulfillment is from the source of your being the superconscious uh, level of the real and not at the level of the ego. So the more that you realize that the character you're playing within the phenomenal plane is not real, not just that the world isn't real, but that you are not real as a separate individual being. That's a character you're playing, but who is playing that character must be recognized. And then you become the one operating your icon in the video game, but not the icon itself. And then you are able to tap into the higher intelligence that will move that icon more intelligently uh, through the phenomenal illusion. Uh, so in order to do that, then you have to drop all your identifications and... Uh, and all of your uh, attachments to those identifications. And then deeper than that, you have to drop all beliefs, every assumption, including uh, the belief in space and time, uh, the belief in uh, linearity, causality, uh, all of it has to be let go of in order for you to Cognize the real. And then uh, you have to dissolve all boundaries, right? Which includes the I thought itself as the ultimate boundary between self and other. So drop identifications and drop all beliefs, is that part of the same one? No, there are two different ones. Beliefs are, is the next one, okay? Mm -hmm. Identification is one level of belief, and then there are other beliefs that are assumptions that are more... Uh, subconscious that have to be made conscious. You don't even know you believe it, uh, but when you start to drop all beliefs, you'll come up with some that you'll say, I can't drop that one. Uh, you know, that's got to be true. Uh, even your belief in God has to be dropped if you have that, or your belief in liberation, because there really isn't any liberation because there's no one in bondage. So drop the belief in bondage and in liberation. Drop all of it because nothing is real that you've learned. Nothing conceptual can be real. All of this, that, all, that, that language uh, conceptualizes is based and embedded in the phenomenal plane illusion itself. So uh, the real cannot be understood symbolically. Okay, there are three levels or registers of consciousness that are important. The imaginary, the symbolic, and the real. The, the imaginary is the one that the ego is in, and it loves to imagine all of its beliefs are true. The symbolic is the ability to think critically and recognize that they are not true. And so you have to use the symbolic to burn up the imaginary, but then the symbolic itself, even in the most abstract capacity for, for the highest level of thought itself uh, is, is an illusion, and that too must go. And then one reaches the real. But these are very treasured aspects of one's life. For some people, the imaginary is too dear to let go of, and uh, one doesn't want to let go of one's denial and one's uh, ambitions uh, as an ego. But even when you've gotten through that, to let go of the ability to think logically and uh, metaphysically and to 
feel like you understand reality because you can articulate it. Even that has to go. It's useful as a teaching device, but you have to understand uh, that it's not true. So everything I'm telling you now is not really true. It's useful in the relative sense uh, to, as an antidote uh, to thoughts that are more embedded in uh, the phenomenal illusion. But that too has to go uh, to get to the natural state that's the zero point, okay? So uh, all boundaries and then finally merge into the infinite self. And I don't know if there's anything to say about that because once you have let go of all thought, then what remains is the infinite self. So it's not actually an act. That final one is simply the realization that this is what has always been there when everything fabricated, everything acquired, everything temporary has been eliminated. This is the bedrock. This is the real, it cannot be removed. That's when you know that you, you have found the real. But there is no one there who finds it. You are it because the real is non-duality. It's consciousness itself without an I thought popping up to say, ah, oh, I get it. No, because that one that says I get it has lost it, right? So it's the, the field, uh, the unified field of absolute consciousness without any agitation in it, without waves, without particles. So uh, absolute stillness. Okay, so the, uh, yeah. Can you just talk about why you called it that, seven dilations? Because they are dilations, they are expansions. Every time you accept, you're expanding. If you don't accept, if you resist, you're contracting, right? So each one of these is a letting go and an expansion and a dilation. Right?